Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us for this exclusive interview with Meredith McCoy, the Funimation voice actress for Android 18 on Dragon Ball Z. And a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Anime North. And we ain't getting paid for this, we're just giving them a free promotional plug-in. Anime North is an anime convention located in Toronto, Canada that celebrates anime, manga, music, games, and all forms of Japanese culture. Anime North will be the weekend of July 15th to the 17th, 2022 at the Toronto Congress Centre, Delta Hotel Airport, and Sheridan Toronto Airport Hotel. I've been going to Anime North since 2009 and I've always had a blast as one of my favorite conventions and it's celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. So it's a huge milestone for the anime community and the convention community as a whole here in Canada. My hair is a serious problem right now. For your information, a pure Saiyan's hair does not change from the day that he is born. Oh. So what can you expect? Well, you can expect everything from cosplays, gaming, special guests, and merchandise. And if you're an anime fan like me, you cannot fathom how much merchandise I've gotten from this place. And if you're an anime weeb like me, this is the place to be. Tickets are on sale now, link in the description down below, but they are limited. So very special thanks to Anime North for just essentially being a huge part of my life. And once again, the event this year is on July 15th to the 17th, 2022 at the Toronto Congress Center, Delta Hotel Airport, and Sheraton Toronto Airport Hotel. Again, disclaimer, I'm not getting paid by Anime North or doing a real sponsorship deal here, although I wish I was doing sponsorship deals. Call me. But with all that said, thank you all so much for watching. Support our Patreon, like this video, share this video, and enjoy the show. Hello everybody, it's Big Jack Films here and welcome to a very special video. We have a new interview uh, set up here going on here at the studio. We used to do it just with like mics and stuff just recorded. But I am here with a very special guest, uh, somebody that uh, who played a character that I admired a lot as a kid. Um, and since we are celebrating 18,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, I would like to welcome the awesome, beautifully talented voice actor from Dragon Ball Z, from Funimation, Meredith McCoy. How are you, my friend? Um, so good. How cool is that? Android 18, 18,000. Perfect. I, I figured perfect timing <laughs> because I'm a huge fan of the character. I remember when I was watching Dragon Ball Z as a kid, I mean, I was into anime beforehand, but at the time my parents actually didn't allow me to watch it because like, oh, it's, it's too, it's funny. They say it's too violent. But yet, they'll let us watch Batman Returns when I was a kid, which is like yeah. way worse. Way more violent. <laughs> way more. So when the show came out, it was like a huge thing for me. I was like maybe six or seven years old, and I watched all the Frieza saga and, and so on. But then once we got to the Android saga and 18 showed up, I'm like, I love this character. I um, like her. <laughs> she was a huge inspiration for me, a huge motivation for me to just do better in the world, like really got me going a lot better in life and everything. And every time I was kind of going through my own fumbles, I just, I would just think, what would she say to me right now? And I always saw her as like, sort of like the soccer coach, like the one that's just like, just get up on your feet and you just keep moving. So just keep it, going. It is a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I've been, you. We've been wanting to do this for a while. Um, so first and foremost, how are you? How has life been, especially in the last two years? Oh my goodness, it's been crazy. Um, it's been crazy, but so good. Like I feel like I know for a lot of people, it's been like a you know everybody's locked down and craziness. But honestly, I've lived this kind of crazy life, and we did more travel and more crazy things. <laughs> during the lockdowns than I've ever done before. So I feel like it's been such an interesting season, but you know, that's where you get to overcome. You know, that's where you learn the most. That's where you grow the most is when in through the trials and the hard things. It's not through the easy times that you grow. It's through the hard times, you know? So I feel like it's been an incredible season, even though it's been crazy. <laughs> As a 30 year old, I mean, I just turned 30 last uh, two months ago. So it was like, it's um it's been probably the most challenging like i think a lot of us have dealt with in the last like bits of our lifetimes i guess the first thing to start with is like how did you get into voice acting where did that start and how, how did you uh start off in your career on that i mean i've been acting and uh you know got an agent and was doing the whole film world and all that stuff um and uh theater world still too i was in college with laura bailey funny enough um, we were uh, best friends and uh, we were doing a theater show together. And funny enough, uh, Dr. Giroux, the character who plays that, Kent Williams, was our theater director at that time. And he said, really? oh, I just got this job. You should totally go and audition. They're looking for girls, like they're looking for girl voices. You should go audition. 
this was before they went through agencies. This is before it was like this big deal. And so I was like, okay, I don't know what it is, but both Laura and I went together um, to audition for Funimation. Um, had no clue what it was really, you know, we just walked in completely blind. Um, and I was auditioned for Android 18. Um, so that was your first gig. Like that was that your was first role. First, one. first role. What a natural right then and there. Holy smokes. Like that's, that that's incredible. So fun. Um, it was one of those things too. Th this is the funny story with behind it is that when Laura and I walked in and I honestly think they kind of typed cast me. They were like, oh, blonde, blue eyed, <laughs> and red 18, <laughs> of course. And, uh, and then Laura didn't get the part. And so she was really upset and was like, maybe I'm not any good. All this kind of stuff. I mean, Laura Bailey, who is like huge in the voiceover world, has like done, gone on to do incredible things. Um, and they were like, no, we just have a different part for you. You know, you can only have one, one Android 18. So like I said, I think they cast me because I'm blonde. Probably if she'd been blonde, they would have booked her. <laughs> it's funny because like, I mean, I, I growing up in Toronto originally, because I watched Dragon Ball Z when I moved actually to the States. I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the time, but in Toronto, I kind of grew up in the first fad of anime with Sailor Moon, which was the first big mega oh, huge yeah. thing. And it was dubbed here. Like all the voice actors are actually friends of mine. They're, they, they was dubbed here in Toronto. So it just made it so much more of an impactful thing going on. So that's incredible. That was your first gig. And it's like- First gig. Probably your <laughs> probably your most iconic role, like out of everything you've done, because I know on Dragon Ball you also did uh, launch. You also voiced mm -hmm. that for the uh, later dub. I mean, was I mean, was there ever like a differentiate between like the two characters? I mean, one thing I wanted to know is how did you find the voices uh, for your characters? How did you like find the right pitch and attitude well, towards it? When we auditioned, you know, we were like, okay, she's an android, so she's you know is gonna have a kind of android. Like she's very, uh, she's a person of few words and she's just this kind of like one tone, monotone. It was one of those things where, I mean, you know, when you audition, you try different voices and they kind of direct you a little bit of what they're wanting. Um, but I don't know. I just have this low sound that's kind of, <laughs> that I think just was like, that sounds like an Android. <laughs> I, I found launch was a bit more Southern, whereas uh, oh, yes. 18 was much more, I saw a lot of like sort of a, a motorcycle girl like a motorbike girl who just like you know, she'll drive off in like a leather jacket with like the the harley davidson's take the helmet off and just look cool like i think that's one of the reasons i love this character she's just so down to earth so free-spirited just doesn't let rules apply to her and just does what she wants in the entire series leaves out sort of the representation of freedom for a lot of people yeah totally because she just doesn't have that fear like that fear of other, what people think any of it she's just like this is who i am and deal with it which is great the thing is i was going to tell you with launch mm -hmm. um i i made her character her uh her you know crazy character her blonde character after my uh roommate at the time because she <laughs> was so cool and so she just had this crazy like accent she was like super like over the top and so i was like I'm going to do a Brooklyn accent for this one. <laughs> and it, just it was so fun. Was it an easy task or did you find like some challenges with your roles? Like in terms of, um, were there any struggles putting it together? Um, well, you know, just learning voice acting in general, you know, in the first part of, you know, doing Android 18, the struggle, you know, you're learning the character, you're learning who she is, the sound staying in that place in your voice, you know, because if I go too high, that's not Android 18 anymore, you know, like it's, you have to just kind of find the place for placement um, vocally. And then the other new thing for me at the time was fighting, like fighting noises, running noises, all that. I was like, what, wait, what is this? You know, cause I hadn't really been introduced to anime that much. My brother watched uh, like Speed Racer, but like, that's all I'd ever heard, you know? <laughs> and so I remember Chris Sabat was directing at the time. He's like, Meredith, haven't you ever gotten a fight? Like, you know, make fight. And I was like, no, I haven't gotten a fight. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> no fighting noises, what do you mean? And so I would laugh after every single like take of like, I did, ha! <laughs> and they're like, stop laughing after every take. <laughs> so. I know the struggles in like doing grunts and like do, getting really all that down. Cause you gotta not only do the grunts and the fight hits, but you also have to do the screams. Like I see some of these guys in the studio, like Sean and Chris, and I'm like, how have these guys n lo not lost their vocal cords? Well, I mean, I just did something recently and it was like, 
whew, you know, and it was, uh, you have to win a bunch. It was a video game. So it was like winning a bunch, losing a bunch, you know, dying, fighting, all the scream sounds. So I was like, I really didn't talk for the rest of the day. I was like, I got to just relax it because I screamed so much. But yeah, you have to learn how to, it's like, you know, it's part of placement, you know, and learning how to do it correctly so you don't hurt yourself. But even then you get really tired. <laughs> and sometimes even crazy. sweat, like doing all those like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, and I can't like not move. Like, <laughs> so I mean, they're like, we're going to like, I'm fighting too. Do you relate to the characters uh, you portray and do you uh, put your own spin on it at times? Like, have you ever, like when you're doing the recording, ever think, okay, well, I'm going to give it my own traits and like add my own spin to it. Has that ever happened? Any like improvs? Um, well, with like the overdubs, it's harder to do the improv part. It's more fun. You can kind of add your little flavor to it more when you're not matching mouth flaps, you know, um, I would definitely say, but you know, like you always put a little bit of your own flair and flavor into the characters, you know, the ones that you relate to more or the parts that you're kind of like, okay, I'm not like this at all, but it would be really fun to be like this a little bit, you know? And so to get to do that, I mean, I've played like at Suko, which was like a, mom that was drinking all the time you know I'm like well that's not me at all but I can go there as an actor and what does that sound like you know and and, and really try to relate to the story the director is also really key on that really helping you clue in because you don't get to watch the whole thing you know you're just watching a piece of where you're at in the story so they're giving you the background and saying this is what's going on and here's you know what's happening and so you just have to get there quickly, <laughs> vocally. Android 18, I probably relate to the most. Maria Ross from Blue Gender was the most my own voice. Like she was the most probably naturally how I speak. Um, but yeah, Android 18, you know, she's just sassy. She's just like in her own like dry way. What was your favorite memories from doing the recordings of uh, Dragon Ball Z and, and on so? Like what were some of the, any behind the scenes stories that you can you can share? I'm trying to think, you know, because it was like those early days, you know, where it was just like all of us, you know, Chris and uh, Sonny and all, all of us were working it and learning it together. And, you know, we'd all got to see each other in the booths often. I feel like it doesn't happen as much anymore. There's automation's gotten so big, you know, but early days, you know, we were all just hanging out and having fun. Um, it's like a big, it was like a big secret club. It totally was that you're like, how did I get in on this somehow? And and then you get, you know, you're kind of on the inside and, you know. So Which is just, funny. There was, there was a Dragon Ball Z fan club back in the day because I used to buy like the, uh, the anime magazines and get all the inside. I actually remember they were talking for eons about how 20th Century Fox had, when the show was a hit, got the movie rights and saying, oh, it's going to be a good movie. It's going to be great. And the cast, like up here, like, like casting rumors at the time, they wanted uh, Cameron Diaz as 18. I'm like, at the time... Yeah, I, I could have seen that. But then the eventual movie. Now, I don't know. Have you seen Dragon Ball Evolution? Have you seen the live action movie? I didn't because I'm mad. They didn't even give me a chance. Like, come on, yo. I look like her. <laughs> I, I'll say this. As, as somebody who reviewed the movie for their 100th episode, and it's like the, the review's longer than the movie itself because it's also a love letter to the show. Um, the best way you can describe it, it's so bad it's good it's like the room of anime movies you can watch it and just realize you can see how much they messed up the studio was just trying to get it off the ground because people were hoping for something super big like when it was starting apparently Zack Snyder and George Lucas were originally tacked on for directing but they didn't want to pass it although now when you watch something like Man of Steel which is the Dragon Ball Z movie you're like why isn't Snyder doing this if you do want to watch Evolution, this is the funniest thing. It's on Disney Plus. Is it really? <laughs> it's on Disney Plus. I had a howl realizing that they had it. So was, I would I would mm -hmm. just recommend it. Have a couple of like have a glass of wine. Have a glass of wine and watch it. And just enjoy <laughs> yourself and, and be like, oh, this is hilarious. That's um, funny. Oh, I remember two early days. We did some sort of promo thing. It was like Eric Vale, me, Chris, and Laura Bailey. And we did some behind the scenes, ridiculous acting thing. I can't even remember what, I don't know if it was released, but. Oh, really? I don't, I don't remember seeing it. I mean, I watched a lot of Toonami and Cartoon Network and I've seen a lot of the promos. And stuff. When did you know the show was gonna, was a huge hit? Like, did you come in before or after it was starting to become super popular? Oh, I mean, I was before, but I think 
as it started to gain popularity, I don't even think I really realized how big it was. I still don't think I do. Like, I still think it like blows me away every time I'm like, what? It was in the Macy's Day Parade, like a Dragon Ball Z thing. And you're like, wait, what? You know? Um, but I think the first time I really realized is um, the first time I went to a con, like when it was early, early days before, you know, you, you, you know, the way it is now. And so they're like, Hey, Meredith, like, you're going to go to this thing and sign autographs. So I was like, somebody would want my autograph, you know? And, and they were like, yeah, so you're going to want to go to this. And I was like, am I supposed to dress up? And they're like, no, no, no they're going to wonder who you are. Cause you're not dressed up. And I was like, wait, what am I going to, you know, I had no clue. I mean, it was just, cause it wasn't as popular as it is now, you know, it was a, still a brand new world. And so I went and I was like shocked because there was people waiting there for my autograph. And I was like, this is a real thing. <laughs> how, how big was, how big was, I want to know how big was that lineup? Because I'll just say this right now. 18 is one of the most pop, probably one of the most popular characters of the show. And I know so many people who are fans of this character. And I can imagine like, say you went to a con now, your lineup would stretch around the block. Like no, it's, so crazy. it's, yeah. So <laughs> How how long how like you probably looked at the line like how far did it stretch I wonder oh goodness I don't I don't even remember because this is so long ago I mean like we were I feel like we're such kids like I mean I think it was like only a year into it so it must have been like two thousand I mean two thousand you yeah, know two thousand two thousand two I I think the Cell game started airing around two thousand like two thousand one I think like when Gohan finally defeated him that was like Boxing Day like the day after Christmas so for kids it was like hey a nice little extra Christmas present we get to see the finale no I mean it still blows me away my my mom's big thing is because she's a high school teacher and so she real she was like I always use you as an example like I know Android eighteen like it's my daughter and so she's like I can use it and it always make it always works so I'm like. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I think I've like just been in this whole other world. So it shocks me whenever it's been as popular as it's been, but you know, I think at the same time, it keeps you very humble. <laughs> it, it has, it has for me again, been the 30 years on this planet. She has been my biggest uh, motivator, my biggest soccer coach, my biggest I love teacher. It. Dragon Ball GT came in after Z aired and you came in to do 18 for a few, a few, she, cause she was much more of a smaller role in, in that follow-up series and with the super 17 arc which is my personal favorite arc uh she had sort of her final bow her final sort of like closure to her character i mean krillin dies again like that's like he's like the kenny of the series um and oh oh everybody's made that joke everybody's made the kenny joke uh <laughs> and so she comes in and she confronts her brother and it's just she she obviously like goku takes the final punch like he always does but that was the first time she really had a hand in kind of saving the day yeah um when that happened were you satisfied with that final original final sort of performance of that character I mean, yeah, I think it's, I think I was, I think I was, I think at the same time, it's like always kind of sad because it feels like it's over, you know, somehow like this, this whole thing that we've been and now we're fighting for and then it's changing and it's transitioning. So there's kind of a death of the, the what was and, you know, entering into the what is. And so, you know, I think I was, but it was a, yeah, I mean, I, I think I don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's always things you would change, but I don't know that I, what I would know what to change. You know? That actually, that is a question I actually do have is like, if you went back in time, Trunks' time capsule went back and said, hey, I want to kind of change this little line or this little uh, bit in, in the story. What would you do with that? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't even know. That would be a hard question, especially because it's been so far set back so far from where I'm, you know, at now with the new the new characters of her being more of a mom and whatever else. So, you know, in last, some of the last movies and the new things that they've been doing. 18's a good mom. What can I say? She's yeah, a good mom. Good. She, she she takes care of things. Uh, actually, I, a little, I wanted to know, like, because there's like technically two variants. Uh, there's, yeah. you know, since we're doing, I guess, Dragon Ball Z was sort of the start of the multiverse thing that you see now in like Marvel. Um, compare, in comparison, which character would you prefer the current, like, uh, Universe 7 one, which is the show's canon, or the one from the future timeline? That's that's the tricky question. Which one is better? Oh, gosh. If they, if they Okay, if they met each other, like, if they both bumped into <laughs> each other, oh, that would be an interesting conversation. Well, they might get a fight, you know? <laughs> I, I'd like to see that. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's such a, you know, it involves so much, you know, so you're kind of a part, a part of the process of the involvement, you know, of it all, because it's been over 20 years that I've done all of this. And so, or yeah, more than so. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm good where she's at. Um, you miss some of the feisty. I mean, she's still feisty always. But the like, you know, she's just off doing whatever at any time. Now she's a little more responsible and has a husband and <laughs> she still fights and went up. I, I still looked at Krillin to this day after the cell games and the boo saga happened. And I'm like, you lucky. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Which I love awesome. Sonny, by the way. He is such a good guy. Oh, he's such a great so guy. I, I met him. I met him once at a Comic-Con like 10 years ago. Really nice dude. In fact, actually, Fan Expo, they announced uh, Sean's going to, and Chris, I think, are going to be coming in. Which, by the way, um, have you ever thought about going back to Comic Cons? Like going back and like doing like a panel with the crew? Or I'm going to do one coming up, um, the the Kamea Con. But I, I haven't like I've been doing so many other things. I really haven't had a chance to do any of them recently. I'd recommend Anime North here in Toronto. They would love to have you. I think Woodstock. But if George Lucas digitally replaced all the hippies with uh, anime people, it, it's, anime it's people. really fun. <laughs> Outdoors, awesome. really great time. Have you kind of noticed, I mean, obviously it kind of brings up the whole thing of how much the show has impacted the pop culture around the world for like 30, 30 something years, especially in Japan and, and, and America, like without Dragon Ball, there would be no anime boom, I think. Yeah. Have you thought about like how much the, this particular character means to so many fans around the world and how that has that ever impacted you in a way? Yeah, no, I mean, you never know how it's going to be perceived because for one, you know, she was a villain, but to see somebody make a change and to go from the dark side being everybody's art nemesis to like all of a sudden being, you know, having this tender heart and becoming part of the team that's saving the world, you know, like is oh, great. there's something that I think we all relate to in that, you know, that, Hey, nobody's perfect. Nobody's had the perfect life. Everybody has a story and a history, but to know that we always have that other chance. And, you know, I just feel like that does bring so much hope. And, and it, it is like Dragon Ball Z in general, just is that like, hey, we're all working together. We don't always get along, <laughs> you know, like the Z fighters, they're not always, you know, the best friends, but there's something that overarching um, theme that when we come together, we save the world, you know? And they, they were the Avengers before we, the Avengers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, because we don't all get along all the time, but we know when we're fighting a common thing and we have to bind together that all of a sudden we can work together and for good. Oh, the show wrapped up. It was kind of taking a huge break. The movie came out. It was bad. Akira Toriyama came back and said, I'm going to do more. Uh, when Kai started airing Dragon Ball Z Kai, you unfortunately did not return for the role. Colin Kleekenbeard actually took over, mm -hmm. which granted, she did a fantastic job. And I remember watching it and I'm like, she's doing fantastic because I, I loved her in Rosario Vampire and a bunch of other animes. Great, but I'm like, yeah. I was watching her. I'm like, it's not Meredith. I mean, she tried. I wanted to know, why didn't you come back? I was actually in the Middle East. Really? Okay, yeah. I need to know. Okay, what's this story? What's this story? Let's go. 18, 18 in the Middle East. She's hey, fighting terrorists. Let's go. East. I know. My husband and I, uh, we had just gotten married. We moved to Los Angeles. And then we have this crazy, we have a whole crazy testimony with that, but we ended up doing a biblical studies in, in the Middle East and doing mission work there, helping uh, with like families in like a, an orphanage and doing a bunch of things like that. And so during that time, they brought the stop, you know, Kai came about and they were like, they couldn't get in contact with me. So when I came back, then they were like, oh, we've got more things. And then I was able to come back after that. But it was literally and just a logistic thing. There is no uh, studios where I was I mean, at. So That's incredible because all I see now is, okay, there you go, fan artists on online. There you go. Draw 18, kick, kick and button in the Middle East. Let's go. <laughs> I, I would pay for that. Um, but it, it, it's great. That's a really wonderful thing to do to just go and help help others in that field especially in in times like that you came back for the new movies uh the uh the uh, two battle of gods resurrection f when I, I i remember going to see battle of gods in theaters and i saw it on a whim i was originally supposed to see the michael bay ninja turtles movies and i was like i got nothing better to do but then i saw I'm like battle of gods okay i'm paying for this and i go in i didn't expect anything and then when I saw 18, I'm like, if this is if this is Meredith, please be Meredith. And I heard your voice, and I kind of did a little uh, fanboy squeeze. I was like, ah! 
And I was just the whole time I was I was I felt like at that point I felt like a ten year old again watching the show. So what was it like coming back? Like it was, oh, like, it was so fun because it feels like an old friend. You know, it's like somebody that I had like known so well and did so much with and had so much history with, and then all of a sudden you get to come back to it. I mean, what it'd been like ten years? I feel like it'd been forever. And so that it was all coming back, and then we got to do a really fun like. Uh, you know, red carpet and watch it all together. And you were you were at the premiere. Like that's pretty. That that's really crazy. What was that like? Oh, so fun. Just because again, I didn't hadn't seen a lot of the people in a really long time, and so it was just like a big you know, friend fest, getting to hang out with everybody again. And so it was a blast. In uh, comparisons to the tournament of power arc and the GT ending uh, with your character, which one do you like more? I sort of been leaning on the the uh, the tournament one because I think it was because uh, when it started and it was kind of redconning GT, I was like, oh no, they're gonna ruin like the the final her final bell. But then when I see tournament power, I'm like, okay, it's good, it's we're good. Yeah, because she like sacrifices her brother. Is like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I'm with you on that. Super fun, you know. Um, and yeah. this is sort of, I, I guess I can bring up this exclusive questions. I don't know if you can answer it. Okay. But there's a but there's a new movie coming out, Dragon Ball Super uh, Super Superheroes, strange title. Uh, 18 is on the poster. Uh, first of all, what do you think of the new design? And second of all, have you gotten the call from Funimation to say where you want to come back for this? I haven't, but I know that they would if it is has something to do with, you know, 18. Because, I mean, I did just do something recently, so, but it wasn't that. Um, so, I don't know. Like, I'm hoping so. I've, I've been kind of like, I'm kind of with you like that on that hopeful. You, you would come um, back regardless. Like, you would come back. So, that's that's oh, fantastic. Yes. I, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'll the characters that I've loved, like, and voiced for a long time, I'm like, you can always call me for it. So outside of voice acting, what other uh, professions you've done? I know you do music and I know Bruce Falconer, when you did like the album, you actually did a solo track. And I wonder what, what else you do, uh, you know, career wise. Yeah. Um, so I am a worship leader. That's a main, my main thing that I do. But second, I teach people how to songwrite. So everything that I do, I, um, I have people come. I do these things called song labs. And so people come and I basically teach them how to write songs and then I teach them how to co-write and we do all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I do these little, um, yeah, I mean, they're just like workshops, um, teaching people how to write songs. So that's a bulk of what I do is write and um, songwrite and then worship lead, sing and record. So that's been kind of my life for the last uh, probably 20 years. And so uh, it's been a blast. I have seen a lot of your work and it's actually really good. I've been really <laughs> uh, enjoying, enjoying the content you do. Um, we actually have a couple of fan questions that uh, yeah. I, I, I did ask a couple of my fans. Uh, hey, like kind of in like my Patreon, we're doing uh, an interview. Do you guys have any questions? And I got about three, which is which is good. One of my uh, one of my collaborators, GT is Reborn, who on my show actually does a perfect, perfect cell impersonation. Uh, impersonation. He's amazing. Wow. I can't help but thank you for reviving me out of Pandora's box. And he wanted to know, uh, what was your favorite Android 18 moment uh, voicing the character. I mean, you know, sometimes those first impressions are so it's such a big deal. My fight with Vegeta and and then my intro to Krillin are always going to be imprinted on my mind, just because those were just epic, you know. And it's like your intro to everything, and that that fight with Vegeta, Vegeta was so huge. Um, I I love the last movie with her uh, her kind of swooning over her Krillin shaving his head yes and then like he flies off and she's like wow i can't remember what she says but she says no, she, she's like, like she just says he's so cool he's so cool yeah that that part and we all died laughing in the studio like we're doing like yes you know <laughs> so, uh in her in her like yes so anyways that was one of my favorite moments only thing i wish she did was that she did join the final battle against frieza's army because uh, man how have they not fought in yet how have those two never had a interaction with one another like i i think i don't know i don't know what 18 would think of frieza probably think you killed my husband I'm gonna kick your butt. <laughs> it's like the five fingered man on that thing. You killed my father. <laughs> yes, uh, Count Rogan. You're Count Rogan, the six, the, six figure, the six figured man. Do you want to have, to have six fingers on your right hand? It's, it's crazy. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Have you ever cosplayed your character? 
like in terms of just I have acting. not. And really, I'm like, I totally should. I mean, I'm like, I got the hair. I just need to like, you know, I just need to get an outfit. I really haven't, and I thought about it. I actually did a commission building the cosplay for two amazing cosplayers. I, I know uh, one is uh, uh, Batty Alana on Instagram, and the other is uh, jo Dova Jesu. And it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do. Go to a thrift shop. Go to a Salvation Army and just pick, look out the outfit, and you can build it's not it like too like that. I mean, hers is hers is an easy outfit to kind of do. And then the final fan question we have is: uh, What advice would you give to someone who's trying to get into voice acting? Um, so now the world is very popular, you know. So my uh, my biggest advice is, you know, I know Sunny. I know some of the different voice actors um, actually do lessons. And they do workshops and they do trainings where you can get your reel done because, you know, most in the world now, because of how big it's gotten, you know, I got in kind of pre all of that. Um, but you basically have to have an agent, you know, you have to have a voiceover agent at this point. And so in order to get an agent, you're going to have to have a reel that shows all the capabilities you can do with your voice. And so it's just kind of getting in there, learning how to really, I mean, it's also anytime acting classes, because it's acting in general, you know, yes, you're just using your voice, but if you can act, that's, that's what you're emoting. You're just doing it with your voice, you know? So, I mean, getting into acting classes, do the work, do it. You know, I mean, a lot of when you're starting to do reels and stuff like that, I imitate, you know, you imitate sounds. You, I can do Disney characters. I can do all these different things just because I would imitate. Um, and that just gives you such good tools to be able to find characters of your own. So well, it's been a, a, honestly a pleasure for you coming in, Meredith. We really appreciate it. It's an honor because we are huge fans. 18 is actually a, a recurring character on our show as a review because we do like masking where it's very Roger Rabbit sort of combining live action with anime and like kind of having them interact. I work with a lot of uh, fan voice actresses, uh, Bay Teen, uh, being one of my personal favorites. Yeah. Betty does a spot on impression. It's actually kind of scary. Um, and one thing I, I have personal question on my end as, as a fan and uh, something I figured a lot of us as fans would want to ask is with all that's happening right now in the world, the pandemic, and then the stuff going on in Ukraine and people who could uh, really use that sort of motivation and comfort that this character brought in her voice. I'm going to challenge you this in her voice. What would be uh, something she could say for re reassurance, encouragement, and inspiration to just keep going. Like what would, what would 18 say to the world as we speak? All right. So, you know, she's uh, not a woman of many words. So here's what I would say. I would say, don't let fear control you. You're stronger than that. Wow. I, I, can, I felt that. I felt that. I'm like, Ooh, that's like, a, that's like a super Saiyan wave right there. I'm like, wow. Yes. So, we want to say thank, well, thank you so much, Meredith, for joining us. Uh, feel free to send this to your colleagues. We'd love to have more uh, voice actors do interviews with us. Um, we're huge Dragon Ball fans. Awesome. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you do in the future. And this character just means so much to us. So a big thank uh, you to thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. And I'm so glad it worked out. And blessings on all your stuff. This is amazing. So keep going. Thank you so much. So until the next video, guys, like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Films and Android 18, Meredith McCoy signing off. We will see you guys in the next video. Take it Woo. easy.